Hello, let's start. So good afternoon, um, everyone. Welcome to my session. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, how to scale and accelerate the distributed model training in Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so my name is Jack Jin. Uh, I am a lead of a machine learning platform team at Zoom. Today, uh, I'm going to talk about the the challenge why we need to do this uh, distributed model training and how do we accelerate uh, in the training and how do we scale in the kubernetes cluster and uh, how do we implement and uh, and we also show some performance testing so the audience for this uh, session is for uh, data scientist machine learning uh, in uh, accelerate training session and also, we're talking to the uh, ML Ops or ML uh, Infrastructure uh, Engineer for uh, uh, in the second, in the third session and, and the fourth session. So yeah, this uh, will be hybrid uh, uh, for both uh, uh, machine learning engineer and ML Ops engineer. So let's talk about the challenge. Uh, as we all know, uh, as the modern uh, machine learning industry. Uh, technology evolving, uh, the data set become larger and larger. Uh, for we've got a uh, hundred gig uh, data sets with very normal. And also the model become very complex. Uh, we have uh, uh, millions or even billions of uh, parameters uh, like GPT-3 or uh, other uh, the language uh, model. And uh, the hyperparameters also a uh, uh, very, very wide range. We have to tune hyperparameters. So what does it mean? It means uh, it will take much longer time to train. And we cannot afford this such a, long, a longer time. For example, at Zoom, if we train a full-size ASR model uh, with full data set uh, in a single node, it could take a week even more. So uh, we have to scale up and uh, speed up. And also, uh, there's another challenge for that, uh, the training job management. Uh, for the machine learning engineer, it's very easier for you to uh, start a training job in your local laptop. But if you want to leverage the entire cluster, the, uh, the, the resource uh, managed by the, your company, uh, you, you have to uh, submit the job remotely. And uh, uh, this is a not easy way. And uh, uh, the other challenge is how do you uh, organizations uh, manage those uh, kind of uh, uh, GPU resource? Uh, is this based on the cloud or based on on-prem data center? And what kind of a system is going to uh, leverage this uh, system and uh, allocate all the, uh, the resource to each of the uh, team, each of the individual training jobs? And this is a challenge because if uh, every team in the same organization, organization have their own, their own workflow or their own training requirement, and they build up something by their own, they, can, they probably have a reinvent the wheel, it will waste the resource. So uh, let's talk about some solutions. First, uh, we're gonna uh, go through the technique uh, about uh, accelerate, uh, accelerate the, uh, the training technique that's for the machine learning engineer. So yeah, for external training, we have to uh, run the training job parallel. And uh, there's a, a, a multiple way to do the parallel training, uh, model parallel them or data parallel them. Uh, but as you can see from the left, left side, uh, the model parallel them run the uh, models uh, in the in, in, in entire of uh, all of the server machines. And each server only runs a partial of the model. And uh, uh, when the, the first uh, few layer running uh, on one machine, the other machine have to wait. It's kind of idle. Uh, for the data part of them, uh, the model will run on all of the uh, machines and data set will be split uh, to each of the uh, machine. Um, then we talk about the uh, pipeline part of them. This one uh, is kind of an improvement for the model parallelism. So it uh, uh, split uh, or divided the, the MIDI batch uh, into an even smaller macro batch and uh, enabled this, uh, uh, the macro batch on running on each of the, uh, the device or the, the machines. 
So it's improved for the model paradigm. And on the right, right hand side, you can see we can combine the uh, para, uh, pipeline para, uh, parallelism and the model parallelism, even data parallelism together. Uh, this is a very complicated. Uh, we will not talk about that, but this is a, a way to do that. And we are going to focus on the DDP training, the distributed, distributed data paradigm. Uh, the, because uh, when we need to run the data paradigm, the we have to we want to run uh, the model training on cross multiple GPU on even multiple servers. So let's go through how this the DDP training uh, uh, works in the uh, uh, in the backend. So first, uh, we need to have a uh, distributed training framework which can launch or run the training process on all of the uh, devices uh, that you can specify. And, uh, and on each device uh, or, or the server, it will load the data from the, uh, the, the drive or from the NFS to the memory, and which is going to do the pre-processing with the CPU and then copy the data to GPU uh, with the GPU and do the, uh, the deep learning new networking for uh, uh, forward pass and calculate the loss and do the backward pass. And then uh, you need to do the graduate uh, communication. So it, you need to calculate the graduate and, and uh, synchronize the graduate uh, across and multiple the, the device, the GPU device. So this one will uh, have uh, a kind of uh, overhead on the GPU communication. Uh, so not only the uh, this uh, this uh, gradient communication, but also the some of the model parameter need to also communicate. So we need to improve this gradient communication efficiency. This is critical. Then let's look at how this uh, uh, gradient communicate between the GPUs. So it depend on the the hardware, the server architecture. Uh, for example, on left hand side, uh, so over here we talk about the NVIDIA GPU. Uh, most of the, uh, uh, the GPU are NVIDIA, this is the mainstream. And um, uh, if you have a two GPU have a, a every link, each other have a link each other, this, the, uh, the two GPU communication will be really fast. But if uh, you have two GPU communication uh, go through uh, an, a CPU, then uh, a CPU to CPU uh, QI link, and then go to another GPU. This route will, will be much slower than the, uh, than the M-Link GPU communication. Uh, furthermore, if your GPU needs to talk to another servers, another work nodes GPU, you, you need to go through a uh, NIC card, but uh, how this GPU connect to the NIC card, whether or not this GPU connect to the NIC card directly, or they have to go through the CPU, it will affect the, the bandwidth, the, the latency. So this is a, a differences. And uh, from the software perspective, uh, there's some a, uh, algorithm we can leverage. Uh, this is a, a NVIDIA NICO uh, a algorithm which can do the ring or reduce. Uh, remember, we need to uh, synchronize the gradient between the, the GPU devices. So the traditional way is you have to set up a parameter server, and uh, uh, but uh, as your device increase, uh, which means you have more uh, uh, the GPU involved in your uh, parallel training, the the bandwidth will also increase. But if you use uh, uh, Nico, which is uh, use ring re or reduce, uh, the bandwidth is uh, fixed. So uh, this one is better. The other uh, technique uh, we can uh, do is for this uh, gradient communication, uh, we call it time filter, uh, which means uh, we don't have to do uh, the gradient communication on every step uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the epoch. We can uh, synchronize uh, if there is a uh, obvious uh, um, model parameters uh, with a BIOS change. Uh, if no uh, obvious chain, we can see, skip. So this is called a time filter. Uh, the other way is the space filter, which means uh, we can try to compress the communication data amount. 
uh, by using a algorithm, for example, uh, in the PyTorch, it have a uh, power SGD. Uh, with power SGD, you can um, just just one line uh, command, one line uh, code, you can uh, compress those uh, the, the communication data uh, for this uh, uh, gradient. So it will speed up the, uh, the communication. Uh, this is called uh, zero data paradigm. Uh, zero means uh, uh, redundancy uh, redundancy optimizer. Uh, deep speed from Microsoft. Uh, this one uh, means on every uh, each GPU, it doesn't have to store all of the gradient. It only stored slides of them. And during this uh, um, the communication, uh, if the GPU can synchronize each other's part uh, together. Uh, so, uh, which means you only synchronize a, a slice. So that can uh, reduce the, the traffic. Uh, besides those, uh, 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 the communication uh, uh, compress, compression uh, technique, there's uh, another way to do is to uh, improve the efficiency is we call the uh, uh, Apex a AMP. This is also coming from a NVIDIA uh, library, library. And uh, the, the principle is uh, it can automatically uh, you know, use uh, or conversion between the uh, flow point 32 and 16. So uh, uh, in some of the step, um, it, it requires full precision, uh, precision. It can use the 32 bit. Uh, and uh, the other uh, uh, steps, it can use a 16-bit uh, flow point. Uh, if you use 16 uh, FP, it can consume less memory and uh, also the less memory bandwidth. Uh, and uh, uh, there is a, a uh, testing from the NVIDIA if they use test, uh, tensor core uh, to do this FP16, uh, it, it, it is uh, like uh, eight times faster. Than IP32. So uh, let's summary uh, what is the uh, distributed training framework you can use. Uh, if you use PyTorch, the PyTorch has a uh, data parallel and the distributed data parallel uh, method. And uh, you can uh, use few lines to convert your regular PyTorch to uh, DDP PyTorch. And uh, if you use TensorFlow, uh, 2.0 has a, a new feature called uh, TF distributed strategy. Uh, you can you can choose between synchronization or uh, asynchronization training. And uh, Higher World is a another uh, third party distributed training framework. It can seamlessly seamlessly work with uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, Keras, and uh, MSNet. Uh, if you use QFloor. Uh, there is an option called MPI operator. Uh, it, this MPI operator uh, can work with uh, hard word, TensorFlow, PyTorch. Uh, PyTorch also have a fair, fair scale um, extension library. It can provide for high performance training. PyTorch Lightning uh, a framework is um, very easy to, it's kind of high level uh, programming framework. It can easily uh, uh, integrate a lot of uh, plugin like deep, deep, deep speed I, I just mentioned before. Uh, Determined AI is another open source uh, uh, open source solution. It can uh, do dispute training. It also can have uh, features of uh, experiment management and hypervised tuning. But the only uh, thing I want to mention here is this dispute training uh, can have to use all the GPU in the one single server. It cannot use the partial GPU on the server. Okay, so we talk about the, the some techniques of uh, accelerated training from the uh, from the uh, machine learning engineer perspective, and now we talk about how to uh, build up a uh, a infrastructure and uh, with Kubernetes cluster to uh, run the the DDP training jobs. And this uh, the below session will uh, talk into the the ML ops, uh, ML platform, or ML infrastructure engineer. So uh, 
we need to build up a uh, infrastructure in the organization to serve uh, the, the different team, the multiple, multiple teams uh, to run their uh, the distributed training jobs. And uh, you can build up uh, this infrastructure by all the open source uh, software. Uh, I am not a uh, representing a, a vendor, uh, but only thing is you you have to use a uh, uh, some hardware or you have to build up this infrastructure on uh, AWS or any other cloud, either on on-prem data center or cloud. Uh, all the software I mentioned here are open source, and you can build up uh, by yourself. But uh, I don't provide a turnkey solution. I just give, go through all the uh, open source. Uh, uh, some technology uh, concept and uh, and uh, uh, some uh, uh, open source uh, uh, component. So first, uh, we want a use Kubernetes uh, to manage the, the cluster. A, it could be a hardware bare metal machine or a uh, uh, like a cloud uh, like EC2 uh, virtual machine. So with Kubernetes cluster, you can uh, provide a reproducible, repeatable. A portable, flexible uh, uh, Docker container, and it is a uh, uh, orchestrator for the, all the Docker. And also, Kubernetes, Kubernetes is a um, ecosystem. It have a lot of machine learning uh, uh, solutions or software, uh, open source software uh, that you can uh, run with uh, uh, the distributed uh, distributed uh, training jobs. So this is a high level of this uh, uh, the platform uh, architecture. So with the Kubernetes uh, uh, installed, and you can have uh, uh, integrate some of the operator like PyTorch operator, TensorFlow operator. Uh, so it will uh, communicate with uh, the Kubernetes uh, master, and the uh, the Kubernetes uh, can schedule your uh, the job on. On the pod, and the pod will uh, consume the GPU, and the pod can uh, run on multiple uh, the worker node. And uh, uh, if you want to leverage the, the high performance uh, hardware, uh, I recommend to use a, a RDMA compatible uh, uh, or Rocky uh, protocol, uh, the the NIC card. Uh, we, we I'm going to talk about later on, uh, but. For to break the the piece of this uh, entire framework, uh, over here I I put to the, the training job to uh, four pieces. So you need a, a training uh, image, which is uh, a Docker image. You can store in a public Docker in or in a private uh, Docker registry, and uh, the training code can be separate than the image, and your code can store in the Git, uh, either GitHub or GitLab. Uh, the training data. Can store in uh, a storage server. Uh, it could be in a distributed uh, storage server or in an NFS. And then uh, after your training, the the model you can store in another storage. It could be in the NFS or uh, store in the uh, the cloud based uh, storage uh, uh, server. Uh, so this is uh, um, the way. How do you uh, submit your training job? You can uh, develop your your uh, your uh, code in the Jupyter, and you submit the job through uh, to the Kubernetes with YAML. Uh, so I'm going to talk about it later on. So the the entire uh, technical component, including uh, from the bottom to the top, uh, from the hardware to the software, uh, the networking. Uh, yeah, you can. If you have a on-prem uh, data center uh, servers, you can have network gear. Uh, you can uh, ask your network team to set up some protocol. Uh, for the server, uh, if you have the GPU server, uh, you can have this uh, uh, metal.NIC card, which is support the RDMA. Or if you, uh, using, you are using the, the cloud, for example, AWS, you can uh, use EFA, which is a um, the the cloud-based NIC card, uh, which is compatible the the RDMA. Um, for the OS level, um, you don't have to do uh, too much uh, as long as it support RDMA Rocky. But if you use Kubernetes, uh, you can have all this uh, the old fat RDMA uh, in the in the in the uh, Kubernetes operator. And uh, for the machine learning framework, I already talked about. And for the deep learning training. Uh, yeah, we can use uh, uh, all the components that I mentioned before. 
So let's talk about uh, uh, RDMA uh, technology. So it, it, it means a remote direct uh, memory access, uh, which means if you have uh, uh, the training job running on multiple GPU or even on multiple nodes, uh, like I said before, the gradient need to uh, communicate and the, and the model parameter need to uh, synchronize between the GPU. So the RDMA can, uh, can speed up your uh, this synchronization from the hardware level and the, the kernel level. Uh, the RDMA was uh, invented by the Infinite Band, uh, but for most of the data center, we use a uh, uh, TCP/IP protocol and the Ethernet. So uh, there's a, a, a RDMA over Ethernet, uh, ROCE V1 and V2, which can uh, kind of uh, transfer transport the, the uh, Infinite Band protocol in the UDP and IP. So with this RDMA rocket, uh, the most advantage is uh, it can bypass the kernel and uh, offload the, the protocol, the TCPIP protocol. Uh, usually when, when you uh, have the, a application uh, talk to, to another application uh, from one server to another server, you have to go through all this uh, uh, OIS kernel, TCPIP. But uh, this uh, RDMA te technology can allow you uh, the, the, the user buffer talk to the, the device driver directly, so it can speed up. Um, there's a, I, I'm going to tell you a little bit of performance uh, that we had, we gained with RDMA. Uh, RDMA GPU direct, which means um, the, when the, uh, the GPU talk to another GPU, goes through the infinite band, uh, uh, the lead card, uh, in the past, it had to involve the CPU. Uh, because the CPU just uh, do a scheduling and the GPU need to do the, uh, the data communication. Uh, but uh, uh, with the GPU direct RDMA, uh, it can, uh, even the, the orchestration can do uh, with the GPU. So it's even faster. Uh, NFS over RDMA, is, which means if you have a, um, a NFS server that store your uh, training data and the, the training the model as a centralized storage, uh, you you need to mount the NFS to the uh, training worker node. And uh, NFS over RDMA can ha have the NFS protocol uh, uh, communicate with this uh, RDMA so it can speed up this NFS mount. OFAD is a uh, open source uh, enterprise uh, distribution. Uh, which include all the RMA required, uh, the NIC uh, firmware, the drivers, and uh, the kernel modules. Uh, this is a, it's used uh, without uh, Kubernetes. But if you have a Kubernetes, uh, the entire uh, OFAD can be uh, managed by the Kubernetes operators. Uh, we are going to talk about later on. Yeah, the Kubernetes is the, the core, is the orchestrator for the entire uh, the uh, GPU resource cluster. Uh, it can also schedule in the, the training job. Uh, it, the most important is the uh, Kubernetes CRD, the customer resource definition. So a lot of uh, this te technology, as I mentioned, including the training job uh, operator, including the RDMA operator, the GPU operator, they're all kind of CRD. Uh, so this is uh, uh, managed by the Kubernetes cluster. And also users, uh, uh, the training job, if you need to submit the job, you also need to interactive with Kubernetes uh, through the Kubernetes client. So um, I, I mentioned uh, if you, you need to use a GPU, uh, especially for the NVIDIA GPU, uh, like uh, A100, uh, you, we need a uh, the NVIDIA drivers uh, and kernels uh, in the in the Docker container. Uh, in the Kubernetes uh, world, it will be managed by the GPU operator. So uh, the the RDMA NIC card also need to be managed by this uh, uh, network operator. So the OFAT uh, the, I, that I talked about in the previous slide can be also managed by this uh, network operator. So both of them are open source. Uh, so far, uh, everything, all the software are open source, and you can uh, download from from the from their website. 
And we also need the queue floor. Uh, the queue floor is also open source uh, by Google, and now it's uh, donated to the uh, NCNF. Um, so the queue floor is uh, entire entire uh, the te technical stack for the machine learning, uh, but they ha there have a lot of components. Uh, over here, we only need a uh, this one the, the, the TF jobs are over, uh, showing this diagram, but uh, we actually we call it the, the the training operator. Uh, it ha it includes the TF job, the the PyTorch job, or MS uh, MS job job. It can run uh, even the MPI job. Uh, this is the uh, the component we need. Uh, if you need uh, more, yeah, it also have a Jupyter the Kative for hyperparameter tuning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we went through uh, a lot of uh, components, and let me talk about how do we uh, implement. Uh, for we have to build up uh, the, uh, the entire stack from uh, from uh, uh, the, with the building block uh, from the networking uh, stack layer. Uh, if if uh, you build up from uh, bare metal machine uh, in the uh, color data center, you can uh, ask your network team to uh, build, uh, build uh, two separate uh, subnet. Uh, if you have an NFS server to store your, uh, uh, as a centralized storage to store your data training data set and uh, the, the uh, training model. Uh, so we want, uh, the the training uh, networking and the storage networking are separated. Uh, the training networking uh, purely uh, will uh, transfer the RDMA traffic. Uh, then we need to provision a Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes, uh, if you uh, are you know manage Kubernetes in the on-prem uh, by yourself, it is a little bit complicated. But uh, there is a, a, a bunch of open source tool. For example, this DevOps one uh, is open source by NVIDIA. It's in the GitHub and uh, in this GitHub, and you can use this tool to provisioning the Kubernetes. Kubernetes. Uh, it also, not only Kubernetes, but also a lot of operators, uh, a lot of uh, uh, monitoring tools, uh, even the uh, container registry, and also the queue floor. Uh, so this is a great tool to uh, uh, provisioning and manage the Kubernetes. But if you use a cloud, like AWS cloud, you can use EKS, uh, which is managed by the cloud providers. And for the operators, uh, this network operator is not provisioned by the, it's not provisioned by this, uh, uh, this deep ops. So you need to uh, install by yourself. This is also open source uh, component you can download from this GitHub. Uh, it it has a lot of this, uh, 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 component I also can you can install by the Helm. Yeah, Helm is the uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes uh, uh, package management. And uh, in order to have the Kubernetes part recognize this uh, RDMA uh, NIC, uh, we need a uh, uh, component called uh, SRIOB, single root IO virtualization. Uh, with that one, so you can have uh, a, uh, a a physical uh, RDMA NIC card uh, become a physical function and a, it will speak to a multiple virtual function uh, and present to the uh, the pod and and within this uh, uh, the pod that the, uh, your training application is running which can see uh, the RDMA device and uh, you need to uh, create a, a YAML file to specify the, the network device and the policy. Uh, this, is, this is also the YAML, just like a regular other uh, the CRD YAMLs. And for the training operator, I mentioned the queue floor. Uh, if starting from the queue floor 1.4, uh, they combine the, all the uh, PyTorch operator, TensorFlow operator, MPI operator, MSNet operator to become one single training operator. And with one operator, you can specify any of our training job like PyTorch, TensorFlow, MSNet. And the training image, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, I, we can separate the, the training code, the training image, and the training data set. The training image only provides the, the runtime, uh, the runtime environment, the runtime framework and all the drivers 
and the code can be in the Git, so it will be very flexible because you are keep changing your your, your code. And the image uh, you can build by uh, for yourself, but you can based on this uh, uh, image uh, from the NVIDIA uh, NVCR.io. Uh, it also already provide uh, the NVIDIA drivers, the CUDA drivers, uh, even the uh, NVIDIA Nico that I mentioned. Uh, uh, for the uh, to speed up the gradient uh, communication, uh, also the RDMA core. Uh, so this image includes all the necessary uh, the technology and the, the software component I mentioned before. And all you need to do is uh, adding your uh, your um, your add-on paths. You can add your script, your startup script, your launch script, and you can uh, your script can uh, clone your. Uh, training job, and you can also specify your uh, the mount path for your NFS uh, uh, for your training data and your uh, training model. Uh, so put everything together in the YAML. Yeah, so you have uh, the training image in a in a, a Docker registry. It could be public or private, and uh, you specify the the uh, uh, the mount, the storage mount for your training data and your output. Uh, model and you you can specify your uh, launch script. The script can call your training code and with uh, the parameters. And the training code you can specify in a, in a Git. So put everything together in a YAML. And the YAML can specify a, a uh, operator with PyTorch or TensorFlow. And also I mentioned uh, the PyTorch. Uh, DDP is a, uh, a native uh, supported uh, distributed training uh, framework, and you need to convert your uh, regular PyTorch code to the DDP code. Uh, I'll just added some uh, some some of the the code line, and also uh, you can uh, use MP Spawn to start your uh, your uh, launch your uh, training code in the multiple uh, part and. Uh, yeah, for this the word size and uh, uh, the word size master, you don't have to specify, specify yourself uh, from the, uh, the parameter. The training, the Python training job will automatically assign those parameters. Uh, but you need to specify the Nico uh, uh, parameters. Uh, for example, this one, Nico IP disabled equals zero, which means you can, uh, you want to turn on, you want, you want to switch on this uh, 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 Nico based uh, the, the yeah you want to uh, uh, switch on this uh, Nico based uh, uh, infinite band which is RDMA. Uh, yeah, this is a training job workflow. Uh, once you have everything ready, the YAML ready, you can submit your your your, your, your training job by this uh, apply the YAML, and it will talk to the Kubernetes cluster, uh, uh, the control plane. Uh, which launched your uh, the CRD like PyTorch operator, and which uh, schedule your training job on on your uh, the cluster. Uh, the, the the job have a, a master and multiple workers, and each of them uh, run a, a pod, and and the pod can consume uh, one two uh, multiple GPU uh, for you in your physical machine, uh, or your virtual machine. Yeah, and this machine is a uh, we call it a Kubernetes worker node. And uh, uh, this diagram just uh, show you a difference that a uh, multi nodes, uh, multi GPU. Uh, uh, what are the differences between this multi GPU, uh, multi nodes, or single GPU multi nodes? Uh, for example, uh, this one is the pod. Uh, if you want to use a a, a multi path uh, multi a multi GPU in multi nodes, uh, in this schema, uh, it's very flexible as long as a uh, the server have a available GPU, uh, one of the path or one of the worker can be scheduled. Uh, but uh, you see when you're doing the the GPU to GPU uh, uh, gradient communication. Uh, it could cross a, a multiple worker node, and uh, the efficiency is not uh, good enough. But for this way, uh, the uh, one single part can occupy all the GPUs, which means when you do the GPU to GPU communication, and this way can leverage the, the NVLink 
uh, and we think within this uh, uh, physical server, uh, the performance is, is, is better than this schema. Uh, okay, so uh, we go through, we, have, we already went through the, the solutions, and let, let's look at some of the, the performance tests we have uh, done before. Um, this is a, a complete, complete, uh, completeness test, which means we uh, we use a, uh, a a regular or smaller uh, model size and uh, a smaller data size. We just want to have the model training job complete. Uh, we want to compare the uh, the baseline, which does not have the RDMA, uh, which the one which have uh, RDMA enabled, and we can see with the uh, uh, multi nodes two GPU training uh, with RDMA is uh, around five times faster. Uh, this is a uh, for the regular uh, complete completeness test, and uh, once we scale uh, the GPU uh, to uh, more, uh, for example, like twenty, uh, we can see the the training time reduce uh, uh, nearly uh, linearly. And uh, then we do a stress test. Stress test means that we're going to have a, a much higher, uh, sorry, uh, the much bigger uh, the data set and uh, uh, complex uh, the model. The size model is uh, much uh, bigger. And uh, we can see uh, the, uh, uh, the multi GPU multi nodes uh, may not work uh, too good. Uh, but so we can enable this. Uh, uh, all GPU per worker node. Uh, if all the worker occupies all the GPU in the in a physical server, uh, it will uh, closer to the the perfect uh, curve. Also, uh, we test uh, uh, the IP sixteen. Um, also, the Power SGD I mentioned before. Uh, you can see uh, with the Power SGD. Uh, the performance uh, is close to, close to the uh, the bare metal uh, performance. Yeah, I think I covered most most of them. Uh, let me back to this slide. Let me look at this uh, questions. How sh from your experience, how should system be configured differently between the computer vision and the NLP model? Uh, from CV and NLP, um, so from my understanding, uh, currently uh, this platform, uh, our platform does support both uh, uh, the CV and the NLP. Uh, but uh, for example, we have ASR um, the, from the audio to uh, transcription, and the ASR model consume much more uh, GPU uh, than the regular CV. Uh, I think probably because we are running the, the CV model in the, front, in the client side, uh, which means we, are, we need to uh, run as small, uh, as small as possible the mo model because we are uh, run the model in the uh, in the Zoom client on the, on the user laptop, so we do not consume too much uh, GPU. Uh, from the system configuration level, uh, I think it is a matter of how do you uh, leverage the the GPU uh, concurrently, uh, whether by uh, the single GPU per pod per worker or the multiple GPU per worker. Uh, that will bring the differences. Uh, also, I if we still have some time, I can share um, a uh, uh, our internal uh, model training system management system. That is our in-house build. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, this the the infrastructure management is Kubernetes, but I don't want to use it to interact with the Kubernetes directly. Uh, because the YAML is not their uh, uh, skill set specialty. So we build out a web GUI based a system that allow users to 
uh, submit the training job and manage the training job also uh, the Python system manages the, the, the GPU resource. Uh, let me see if I can share this system, share a, a little demo from the system. Uh, this is a very, oh, okay, this is a, a dashboard uh, that show the GPU resource and the, uh, the training image. This is a training job uh, launch template. You can select the different mo uh, GPU uh, per node. Uh, this is a training job uh, tra training job running based. Uh, this is a training template. This is the one, uh, the previous one, and uh, we have one. The latest one, but it's not clear enough. I don't know why. Um, yeah, this one. Okay, so you can select it. Uh, the different GPU, the, the Git, the NFS, the, uh, the data set. Uh, this is a template. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, the job detail. And this is, a, uh, you can see the tension board. Uh, you can see the full log, the full log of the, each of the job. the data set that you can manage adding or deleting of them. So this web GUI is used for uh, the machine learning engineer and, and data scientist, and they can manage their training. Oh, this is a experiment tracking, and you can compare the metrics, uh, the distribution, and this is a high performance tuning. And this one leverages uh, the Kadeep. And yeah, you can do automatic FHP. Me. Uh, this is the model management. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, this one, the recording is not clear enough. I don't know why uh, it's not showing here. Yeah. Oh, you cannot see. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, are you able to see this one? Yes. Uh, are you able to see this screen? This screen? This is a, a, a QuickTime player. QuickTime player from uh, Apple. Okay. But Okay, that's fine. Uh, but uh, I think uh, we are done. Um, this is uh, in our internal uh, in-house build a, uh, a web GUI based system. It 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 just provide a, a web GUI for a user to uh, easily uh, submit or define or manage their training job, and you can design uh, define the, the the template and can share the template with within the team. And you can easily launch the training job from the template. You can manage the data set. Uh, you can also manage the, the, the training model. And you can uh, do the hyper tuning. You can uh, 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 compare the, the experiment tracking. Yeah. Uh, behind the scene, uh, we are using the te technology that I went through in this session. Yeah. This is just the web GUI. Yeah. Uh, so most of the thing, uh, most of the technology I, I, I talked today is open sourced and uh, uh, you can build up yourself. Uh, you can do some research and uh, all of them are uh, in, the, in, the, in the website. What are the typical reliability issue you have with parents uh, and what method to address them? Uh, reliability, because we are uh, running on the, um, entire infrastructure on the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so 
the, the cluster managed by the Kubernetes, any of the worker node in, in terms of the hardware failure, uh, we are okay on any worker node went down. Uh, in terms of the, uh, any worker went down, it will affect the training job, but we enable the checkpoint, right? So every epoch have a checkpoint. If any uh, the hardware failure cause the training job harm or uh, complete, uh, stop, uh, once uh, the, the hardware uh, coming back, uh, the job can recover uh, from the checkpoint. I will automatically continue. How do you see the maturity of those open source solution? Uh, that's a good question. Um, maturity, I would say the Kubernetes uh, has been there for eight years, uh, seven years. Uh, it is pretty mature. Uh, but in terms of using the Kubernetes to manage the training job, uh, it's a little bit new because I know uh, a lot of companies use Slurm to manage the, the machine learning, especially the deep learning training job. Uh, but Slurm um, uh, is designed, not designed for the, for dedicated for the machine learning and deep learning, but uh, in a Kubernetes world, there's a lot of open source uh, it's an ecosystem. There's a lot of uh, solution you can find from Kubernetes, Kubernetes from, for the machine learning and deep learning management. I prefer to use Kubernetes uh, for, the, for the, uh, uh, the underlying technology for the acceleration and the uh, scale, uh, especially if the, some of them I mentioned from the NVIDIA company. That's pretty reliable because this uh, from B, supported by the B company. Uh, yeah, it is okay. I'm more concerned about the operator, which are newer. Operator, yeah, operator is a kind of a component that you can, uh, you know, it's kind of like a plugin, right? Uh, it's it software uh, that work uh, as a way like uh, other uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so it's a, a declarative way, and you can define your YAML. Uh, if you don't want to build your own your own operator, uh, see uh, in this session I talk about the the uh, PyTorch operator, TensorFlow operator, and the, the NVIDIA uh, network operator, GPU operator. They are um, they are the tools we just leverage. Um, I'm using it uh, for a year. Uh, so far, so good. It's okay. Uh, I haven't had any issue uh, that I cannot resolve. So we we, we do have a have a little issue at the very beginning. Uh, that's probably we are not familiar. But after that, uh, for example, if you have NVIDIA uh, GPU server. You will get support for those uh, uh, open source tools that are from NVIDIA. Uh, right now, we are pretty bit stable. Okay. Uh, I know it's pretty late for the East Coast. Uh, if there's no other further question, we can write up wrap up and uh, thank you everyone uh, if anyone want to further contact me you can reach me through the LinkedIn thank you guys bye bye